Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Going to be taking a look at an important document uh, today on Cartoonist Kayfabe. But first, I got to let you guys know that we do have a Patreon, and our biggest supporters get all the videos first. Plus, they are watching us stream this video in real time. Uh, and I do think that this is going to be a book that is going to get hit by that Kayfabe effect because it's a rare book, it's an expensive book, and there are right now five up on eBay. Mm. Will, will there be five um, much longer after this video goes live? Will they even be there by the time this video goes live? If we got some real ballers in the uh, the chat room right at this moment. But the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. This is our bibliography right here. Right now I have uh, Red Room Crypto Killers Issue 1 on solicitation for your comic shop. So go put in those uh, pre-orders so that we know how many of these things to print up for you. Uh, two other trade paperbacks uh, for Red Room are out there. Hip Hop Family Tree celebrating its 10 year anniversary. X Men Grand Design. WYSIWYG is out there. Jimmy has a forthcoming Hulk Grand Design trade paperback in that Treasury Edition format is on its way. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive is out there. Street Angel Princess of Poverty is available for pre order. Plain Janes. All kinds of stuff we have out in the wild. Uh, now that we're are done paying those bills, let's take a look at the definitive way to, uh, to read Domu. Man, talk about definitive right from the get-go. The slipcase, gold embossed lettering. Wow. That is the way to present this stuff, man. There is uh, an additional piece to this. See, here's the book that is inside of the uh, slipcase here. And then uh, there is an outer cardboard box that this all comes in. So you should know that, like, uh, because if you're going to spend $400 or something, you probably want all of it, all, like every piece of it. Uh, so if uh, you see one online, they don't have the cardboard box, they're still trying to get comparable prices uh, to, to the cardboard box things, you could probably talk them down a little bit with that knowledge. Like, hey, I know that there was like another piece to this. And uh, the Mandarakes in uh, Tokyo, they, they knocked significant prices off when the box was dinged up when a slipcase is dinged up. So take all of that into account whenever you're trying to make your purchase. But we were out there in Nakano Broadway Mall, Jeff Darrow, me and the crew, and uh, in the hallway they have the wall books, you know, the glass case books. And uh, I don't think it says the word Domu in Roman letters uh, on that cardboard box. So Koenji Sean, uh, the Japan book hunter, kicking it with us. Railing, naming shit off. Oh, this is that. Oh, this is the last uh, Kaze Shinobu Tanko Bond that I need. This is that. Oh, down there, that's Domu. They just pointed to that cardboard box. We're like, what? That's Domu? That's a big box. At this size? Right. Uh, it must be the size of the original artwork, which it is. Guys, this is the presentation for Domu that we got, which, when I divulge that information to the guys in Japan uh, and told them that this shit came out in like 1995, they were laughing. That's so late. That's more than a decade after the shit came out. Uh, it hurts my feelings <laughs> that that we don't get the, the wide breadth of like what comics is, man, because of rights issues, because the creator doesn't want to re have comics reprinted at a certain time or whatever. Uh, I cherished this thing when I saw it. I knew that it was forthcoming by way of Wizard Magazine. You know, they really started to, to do a lot more uh, manga content in, in the magazine, like right before this came out. So this was forthcoming. And scooped these up for nothing. Uh, in, in, a, in boxes of comics, my dad got like, you know, um, for $8, got four full boxes of comics, two, $2 a box. And these were just nestled in there. Uh, probably some of the f some of the earliest manga I read, and uh, this is one of the earliest videos on the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel that uh, we sort of dissected and, and talked about the thing, looking at Katsuhiro Otomo's uh, body of work. Yeah, one of the really fun early discussions. I think Tom might have been a part of that. Absolutely. And and you know I've said it probably in those videos and in other videos, but I mean this is one of those short lists for me of like perfect books. Yeah. You know, even beyond comics, like it's it's somewhere between a novel and a short story, and it's flawless. And my admiration for short stories is there's no room for waste. Like like yeah. a perfect short story, everything makes you know is important, is valuable, makes sense. All the characters are vital, and that's what you get in this. And it's so rich. I want you to hold on to those books, Jimmy, and where I have stuff flagged, 
uh, I want you to pass those books over. I'm really glad you mentioned that this is the uh, original art size. Yes. Because that's what I was going to ask about. It's great that you have that info. Could you imagine the artist edition, right? right. Like, like it's essentially what you've got here, yes. almost. Yeah, pretty much. Like, it doesn't have uh, the sort of marginalia and all that. It, this is artwork that is prepared for black and white line reproduction. But the thing is, having it at this giant size... I'm seeing lines that I recognize. Now, don't mistake me for saying, I think I could do this. But I make lines on paper that resemble this. What I'm taking a look at and responding to right here is, like, at this level, you get to see, like, little choices that are made. Okay, there's, like, little blips, little chunks taken out of the zips. Look at the fidelity. Like, it's still in there. But... I can understand these dot screens. It's very educational for if you're going to use Zipatone yourself, grab some zip screens yourself, compare them to the different tones that uh, Otomo is using uh, in, in his comic. Uh, the lines all make sense. I could tell what's a tech pen. I could tell what, what everything is. And when you see stuff at this scale, uh, it's only that much more humbling an experience to see what this guy's doing. It's on great paper. It's absolutely stunning, the reproduction, because these lines are so fine and they are crisp. Talking to some uh, people from Japan, like I'm a part of the Katsuhiro Otomo uh, sort of fan club on Facebook, where uh, people share a bunch of cool stuff. And uh, a lot of those guys who were aware of this exact Domu um, presentation said that, uh, you know, Japan is humid humid uh, island and this paper just sucks up that fucking moisture and you will get little mildew dots on on your paper and there are people who said that they never saw a good copy because there'd be just like yellow dots and stuff there's none of that on this very thankful about that and maybe if you're about to make that 400 hundred dollar purchase on ebay amazon you, you ask for the guys to give you a little spin through if that if that's a big concern to you yeah, that would be a concern of mine. That'd be an expensive book in my collection. <laughs> for sure, man. For sure. Uh, once again, like there are these iconic moments, and comparing them with like the material that we have, right here, you could see it's a good image, right? Like, like uh, it's it's flipped for America, so we read uh, left to right. It's interesting they don't flip the images. These two images, you know, and I I don't know if that's a sword thing, you, you know, like we've heard that in Samurai. Manga. What's funny is at a certain point when we get to the big uh, when we get to the big face facial splash page, they they did flip that, which is very curious. There's no reason for that. That's so interesting. The flips and not flips. Yeah. You know because like that that last big page that we looked at was flipped. Yeah. But here, like none of this is flipped. No. You know the the page order is different. But yeah. The actual content of the page is not flipped. It really feels like a different book. We looked at this uh, off camera when you first got back from Japan. And I can remember flipping through this and just like I had never seen it before. You can't imagine it being printed at a small size. No. When you see it at this gigantic scale. Very heartbreaking in a lot of ways that this can exist. Right. And yet we don't have access to it in English in an affordable edition. Yeah. Like, come on. Publishers here. Beg a tomo. Like, do whatever right. you got to do, man. It's, it's a crime against book lovers not to have this available. It's just so instructive to see the work at the size that the guy drew it. And seeing the confidence that he had to just allow there to be some white space. It's amazing to see these figures and how they look. If this were the printed final size, I would think, wow, that's really expressive. You know, the fidelity, the facial features, you know, they're all so tight. And to think like this is the actual size of the drawing. Right. It's kind of unreal. And once again, um, you know, these are marks that we can make. It, how, how close is he looking at this? You know, like, is this, does he have a loop? Like, what right. are, how are we drawing this kind of detail? Yeah, they are very used to drawing very, very tiny and in, in, in very, you know, small details. But uh, you could also really appreciate the use of Zipatone and how he sort of cuts things off to create that dimensionality. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the great tricks in Zipatone is like, if you have just like a pure gray, you just chip a little bit of it off and it creates that 3D. Yeah, it's a real masterpiece. It's painting in black and white. Yeah. 
And, and to do it in so much line is remarkable. Let's look at some of the, uh, the big moments from the comic. What do we got here? I don't know where that one's at. That might be page one of this. Yeah. But you see, that's flipped for no real reason. You know, you almost get a feeling of the artist edition too, because you can see like what, like inconsistencies in the ink there where it's a little bit thinner. Yes. So like comparing it to the printed page where that's flat black, you can see a little bit more nuance yes. in what they're reproducing here. And and what we're looking at, because I bet you it's still black and white line repro, but uh, you sort of bit mapped out in a way like whenever they, whenever they photograph it. But uh, we looked at Genga, I believe, and this stuff that you're seeing is black for this presentation is actually a wash with like a process red mm -hmm. or a red watercolor. So it's being interpreted in, into a black and white for, for this particular process. It's great to see the blood splatter too, because I feel like most of us have done blood splatter in some way or another in our comics. And it's one of those weird, like, how do you actually draw this and make it look good? So it's kind of cool to see master blood splatter. Sure. And, and I mean, it's like, it's like a, um, Dexter level yeah. of thought where, you know, you got this, like, like the point of impact was here. The, the, the thing happened here. You got the hand prints, but like it's coming out from this center point. I mean, maybe that's right where he fucking slid his own throat. Wild. Seeing it at this level, you could almost want to throw up too. Probably, uh, in red, in red as well here in the uh, printed book. That's the other thing, man. Um, unless you get, I think if you get the, uh, the new complete Otomo Domu, it includes the, the colored pieces that, that begin each section. And, uh, there was the art of wall exhibit interview that we did or no, it was, uh, with Ganga. There was a bunch of interviews in there. And somebody sent us PDFs of the actual interview content because it's in Japanese. And uh, Domu is one of these very rare instances where the magazine, where the story was initially being serialized, was uh, it, 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 it got canceled. So he, Katsuhiro Otomo, did not finish telling the story that he wanted to tell and just did an extra 80 pages in the Tanko Bond format, which is sort of unheard of. It would be like the idea of doing an original graphic novel, just just it wasn't done. But he needed to, to do that to, to finish off this very tight narrative that he was putting together. So the last chunk of this stuff is all, you know, him like living off of savings, basically, or maybe in advance. What a great panel. Catching the motion of the car lights. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really cool use of perspective. <laughs> Speaking of cool use of perspective, huh? And once again, he tricks you into, because you understand these lines, I think it is inspiring. Like, oh, I should, I should get to drawing. Do you have the hand that Otomo does? No, you do not. And you accept that. But you fucking make your comics anyways. Yeah, no doubt. I wonder if he had a model. I know that, you know, like this building was maybe yeah. loosely based on a nearby building, but it's such a realized environment. Yeah, it's it's the projects that he grew up in. Like that that is the building um, that, that he used. Whenever he's doing this taper thing, uh, you know, you see this with the, with the lighting, with yeah. the zips. You'll see a, many different interpretations of it. And the cool thing about seeing it at this size is if he's not using a flowing... Uh, blended set of zips it's he's playing with like say five percent different screens on each mm. wall genius yeah wow still doing the same amount of cutting yeah the cutting's crazy yeah i forgot that's where he grew up that makes total sense because there's such a personality of this structure right man again with these perspectives incredible this book yeah. is is so underrated and it, it could be because it just isn't seen as much here like people don't get it that's it that's it man i mean uh we <laughs> we find copies out in the wild like people are selling these these things a hundred bucks an issue the dark horse joints we've seen them for a buck i've bought whenever i see Every them i buy I them. see them i buy them in a dollar bin. yeah <laughs> it's not that often but you're right i've pulled quite a few out over the years there was that time we uh we were down in um Heroes taking a look at it through the warehouse and 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 uh, 
Shelton was like, put a box together of whatever you want, man. This is like our dollar stuff. You could just take it. And being honest, man, we saw those domos and they were like, Shelton, these are more than a dollar. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are very much more than a dollar. You know, this great moment. We need that piece. Let's take a look and see what that looks like under the, uh, the big screen. Yeah, one of the all-time greats. Again, talk about physics. You yeah. know, uh, you were showing off a Red Room page earlier, Ed, where it's like you got to put the foot on the guy's head if you're going to pull this knife through. Right. <laughs> That's what you're getting here. It's how you sell this stuff in comics. And having that impact used to blow me away. Not just this book. I didn't read this book till I, I was an adult. But you have those moments in, uh, in superhero fights once in a while. You'll see it where it's like that feels real. It feels weighted. Let's construct our YouTube thumbnail. Yes. Because this is the image when we mm. saw the cardboard box where we were like, imagine what that two-page spread, old man Cho portrait when he's all freaked out. What must that look like? Uh, looking deep, looking very closely, there's a lot of tech pen used. A lot of rapidograph. I like to see that his rapidographs get clogged up, but maybe that's technique, you know? Yeah, that could be just the inconsistency of the ink flow as you're like dry. Because, I mean, these are... If he's doing it quick. This is, this is a fast move. I just saw James Jean post a video. He had done the well poster, which is a super close-up of Brandon uh, Fraser's face, right? And it, he showed a video of him drawing it, and it was with microns because it's this kind of treatment. Yeah. And I wonder if this was something that was an inspiration for him because build-wise, very similar. Right. You know, like imagine you look at this and you think about... I mean, just physically the amount of time to put that many lines on a piece of paper. Yeah. And you cannot allow an assistant to fuck with this. Like, you, you have to do the hand. See, this is one of those funny pieces where... Boy, that might be your thumbnail, Ed. It is the thumbnail. Like, <laughs> That's a like, great, like, like, the two, two together like, like that. I, I put this image up on Instagram, and it's the, the most popular image I ever put on my Instagram. So, Wild. So uh, this should be uh, the YouTube thumbnail. Let me get my fingers out of that. But you see, the, the face is flipped. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, there's no good reason why the face is flipped. It's, maybe it's just inertia. They were just going through the motions. Yeah, it's odd. And flipping a bunch of faces. But uh, the bottom small image is what we got to have here in the States. And that big piece, that's what you're paying for. Unreal. Isn't that fantastic, Jimmy? It is such a, a teacher of crosshatching. Yes, it is. You know, like like watching how these crosshatch lines, which are almost perpendicular, come out of the shadow behind this collar. It's just amazing. And to be able to do flesh, because we often talk about this, like how do you make lines that wrap around a form mm -hmm. that describe that solid three-dimensional feeling? And a face is round. So now you really, it's imperative that you get those lines right in order to feel round. Yeah. And you could study this all day for, for those qualities. Using hatching as color? Uh, in places as well as shadow, you know, like this is a darker value than this outer shirt, this kind of area. Well, no, that's a, that's definitely a shadow, but he's using crosshatch for many different reasons, uh, using these like little lines. And it really does create that woven texture, you know, like on the cardigan here, feels like an old man's shirt. And then all the little like Morgan Freeman joints all over his face, those little freckles and shit. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Yeah, it really is. Uh, hatching on an eyeball is something that uh, intimidated the hell out of me growing up and stuff. Always man. admire that. Yeah. Like, uh, you got to hatch the eyeball. The, uh, an eyeball is not just, a, just white. Even the edges of your irises, you know, how often have you looked really close? You know, you take that photo of your eye and you just really zoom in and look. It's really great to see it here like this. Yeah. And those lines tighten up so fast whenever it's shrunk down you know what else i see when i look at this is some of jack davis's pen work sure. because sometimes he'll go heavy hatching like if you look at like hum humbug era jack davis where it's all pen yeah you can see some of these qualities you know where it's like the, the those hatches really are able to describe almost anything mm -hmm. man this is uh this is one of those things man just a, humbling, a marvel. humbling effort could not wait to see what this looked like and uh King Kayfaber's in the chat room as we finish this video, when it's uh, when we close out of here. And uh, those of you out there who decide to pull the trigger, let, let us know. Who are the big willies out there, man, that, that see the inspiration that this uh, sort of generates mm. and who want 
to have that kind of high fidelity piece of Katsuhiro Tomo art in their house. Big book, expensive book, rare book. Only 5,000 of these things are out there. Me and Jeff Darrow are two people <laughs> of those uh, 4,998 <laughs> out there now. Yes, sir, man. Jimmy, you good to go? Yeah, I am. Kay. What a rich... What, a, what? I'm so happy to see this thing, man. I had no idea it even existed Me before neither. you brought it back. Me neither. We found out in real time and made impulse buys that were very, very uh, fortuitous and just knew that it was never... You, you'll never get it cheaper. Mm. K favors like follow subscribe to the YouTube channel hit the bell we'll notify you when new vids are available and like I said up front we do have a Patreon and the people who are watching us stream this live on the Patreon or who have gotten this video first on the Patreon they they have first dibs to buy this book off of Amazon eBay whatever aftermarket you find and there are a very finite amount of copies of these out there Otherwise, Jimmy, tell them what we have out there, man. I help keep the lights on for the Cartoonist K Fabe channel. Hulk Grand Design, Street Angel Princess of Poverty, Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, and The Plain Janes are my latest, greatest books. Grab those wherever books are bought and sold, including your local comic shop, man. Reserve those books today because some of them probably aren't going to be around in print for very long. Uh, you can also join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see a lot of my original art and what I'm working on next. And just recently posted some blue line templates that you can download. Uh, anybody can download them. Those are free to the public. So sharing some of those making tools uh, online. Red Room Crypto Killers Issue 1 is being solicited to your comic shop right now. Put in your pre-orders at this moment. I have two trade paperbacks for Red Room Out in the Wild, Red Room the Antisocial Network, and Red Room Trigger Warnings. Get your hands on those comics. Each contain four self-contained stories. I'm serializing the new Red Room stuff on my Patreon for three bucks. I'm more than 300 pages up there right now. New strips every Tuesday. It's the 10th anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree. Four volumes of that out there. Check that comic out. X-Men Grand Design. Three volumes of that are out in the wild you might find the occasional whizzy wig uh, if you look hard enough jimmy tell the people what else uh, we have out there man subscribe to the cartoonist kfab newsletter at the links below this video you can also find cartoonist kfab t-shirts merchandise stickers mugs hats fanny packs all kinds of great stuff at our spread shop that link is also below this video given those marching orders jimmy will be on our way read more manga